coming up Thursday night. And our special showcase main event, this is a highly anticipated debut, and it's also that classic grappler versus striker matchup that a lot of people think is the reason mixed martial arts came about in the first place. Brittany Elkin, far more experienced in the world of mixed martial arts, training for a lot longer, brown belt in jiu-jitsu, as I mentioned, and you are the one given the task of welcoming the quote to the new sport. What do you think? Hi, I'm Brittany Elkin. Um, yeah, I think that I think that I'm here for the upset, or I want to cause the upset, and uh, I'm just really excited to be a part of this uh, matchup. It's an exciting matchup. Little Bird told me that you predicted a second round finish yeah. in this bout. How does that come about? Well, I think the first round is is going to be a lot of you know feeling each other out, and uh, of, I just think that we both probably will give our best in that, and I predict that it'll get to the second round, and looking for no. And Clarissa Shields, nobody on our PFL roster has the credentials like you. Three division champion in the world of boxing, two time Olympic gold medalist, as I already mentioned, and you're risking the reputation and everything else to join the mixed martial arts world right in the prime of your boxing career. You take on someone who's far more experienced than you. What should we expect? Well, one, I just want to tell Brittany, she doesn't sound confident in none that she's saying. First, it's supposed to be 15 seconds, now it's going to be the second round. Truth is, Brittany Elkin gonna lose, period. Um, I've been in training camp for seven months uh, at the Jackson Wing Gym, training with some heavy hitters, uh, Arlene Blanco, uh, Holly Holm, Johnny Bones, uh, Kayla, and I put in a whole lot of time. And I didn't come to the PFL just to have my beautiful record in boxing and all my accomplishments be detoured by somebody who not even really like a serious fighter. So I'm not even about to pay her any attention of all this. She's going to knock me out or submit me. Like, I'm an athlete. I'm a fighter. And as much as anybody up around this panel, I'm now an MMA fighter just like y'all. So don't just count me out just because uh, Brittany has been in MMA for 12 years and hasn't been great at anything except for jujitsu. So I'm just an all-around great athlete, great person. And um, I'm just looking forward to getting in there and just shutting all this stuff up about grapplers being able to beat boxers because I'm not just a grappler. I'm an MMA fighter now, so just accept it. Clarissa Shields, Brittany Elkin will cap off the action on ESPN2. That begins at 10 p.m. Eastern. We'll now open the panel up to questions from the press, submitted remotely, of course, as we're here in the Atlantic City bubble. Colin Crandall, please. We'll come back to you, Colin. Sydney. Thank you. Hi, Clarissa. Sydney from ABC 12 in Flint. I have a question for you real quick. Um, you've been training so long for this, and even while you were boxing, you were still training. It's absolutely crazy. Um, is there any pressure to show all that hard work was for nothing? You, you touched on it a little bit, but do you have any pressure to show that all of that hard work you've done these last eight months was really for nothing? You're going to do this. Uh, hard work can never just be for nothing. So I feel like all my hard work has got me to where I am today. That's how I got this um, position to be the main event. And just my MMA debut, I would have been perfectly fine being the TV opener or being under Anthony Pettis. I wouldn't have cared. But the fact now that I'm the main event, I feel like I have to bring something a little extra. So we definitely worked on that up in camp. And um, regardless of everything, just my overall goal is to – one day be MMA world champ and be boxing champ. So right now I just want to get that experience, get the W's and just continue to move forward. But I don't think that my hard work could ever be put in vain because hard work only makes you better regardless of any outcome. Thanks, Clarissa. We're rooting for you in Flint. Thank you. Colin, are you with us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Excellent, this question is for Clarissa Shields. Clarissa, I'm curious to, to hear how you feel the training for MMA and the hard work that goes into it compares with the training in boxing. I've answered this question so many times, and it's like uh, boxing is apples, right? You just kind of get an apple, you rinse it off, and you bite it, and you eat it. And then MMA is like an orange. You got to peel it, and you got to... It's really a grapefruit. You got to peel it and you got to peel it again to get the other skin off. And then you have to get the fruit on the inside. So 
It's like uh, MMA is so much more complex. And I always felt that I was a fast thinker because I am in boxing. But the first time that I sparred, I was like, oh, I think I'm thinking a little bit slow in here. <laughs> so I was happy to see that my progress over the over the last few months that uh, now I actually understand like what I'm doing and what I'm watching. And, uh, and I'm ready to execute the game plan. But it's like apples and grapefruits. It's, it's two different it's two different sports, but it's all about fighters. It's all about having that fighter's attitude. It's about having heart, wanting to learn, having an open mind, being being humble, and just going in there and fighting. And that's what I'm here to do. Absolutely. Well, good luck, and thank you very much. Thank you. Kelsey McCarson, please. I'm Kelsey McCarson from Heavy. Uh, my question is for Clarissa Shields. Clarissa, you've been some on the some of the biggest stages – Right, two-time Olympic gold medalist, world champion in boxer, two-time undisputed champion, three different weight classes, all these big things. But how do you think you'll feel? Will it feel different when that cage door closes, right? Like, I wonder, like, as you get closer, it's got to be super exciting, but I wonder how you expect to feel um, when that happens. You know, I'm happy that the PFL allowed me to come here. Um, I think it was two months ago, or was it – I think it was two months ago and I was able to do my whole little cage walk. And um, that was something that me and my manager and all of us wanted to have because I never done it before. And I wanted to kind of feel what it felt like. And maybe the second time it would feel less nerves. So the first time I did the cage walk without even having my, my opponent in the, in the cage waiting for me, I just felt like so many <coughs> nerves and I had on just a bra with some tight pants on or shorts and I didn't have on any shoes. And I just was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> it was so many nerves. But um, after, like I said, doing that, I feel like I'll have less nerves for this. And I feel like I've had so much time to train and prepare. And I'm not going to let my nerves get in the best of my performance. So the game is to go out there and execute the game plan. So that's what I plan to do. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they locked the cage in sparring. And I think I'll feel the same way when they lock the cage on Thursday because I always feel like boxing and MMA is all about war, right? And it's about me versus you, woman versus woman, man versus man. And can't nobody help you in there. And I, and I feel like maybe if Brittany has some help, she could beat me, but she can't beat me by herself. So I'm looking forward to proving that. Thank you. Tanai, I have a question for Brendan. Hey, Brendan, tonight from MMA Island here. Um, yesterday on media day, you said you and Bubba Jenkins are on a collision course. How does it feel sitting next to him? Have you been eyeing him down the whole time? Bubba's cool. Bubba knows what's going to happen as well. So, you know, I said it after the last fight. They can all get it. And I meant every last word of it. I mean, I'm here for a million dollars, man. This is the art of war. I'm not messing around. So Tyler first and then Bubba's next, Bubba's next. Good luck to both of you. Can't wait for it. Aldrick? Yes, this is Aldrick from the Fight Dialogue. I have a question for Brittany. Uh, Brittany, obviously, uh, this is your, uh, this is a big fight for you in your MMA career. Uh, what tools do you feel like you have applied into your game plan in uh, going against a formidable opponent and uh, against Clarissa? I feel like I have a lot of cage time experience. There's things that can't be simulated in sparring that happens in fights. Um, and I feel that I'm gonna use a lot of advantages that I have in that, those experiences to move forward in that fight. And my follow-up question for you is, um, you know, being an underdog in this, uh, what statement would be made, uh, not just for your mid career, but just for you as a person going into this, uh, this, Intense rivalry. Statement into the cage. I couldn't hear you in the beginning very well. Oh, sorry. Yeah, um, I was saying, um, what would an upset win? What what statement would it be for you as not just a fighter boss for a person to overcome this obstacle? I mean, it would be great. I would love it if it would, you know. But uh, I'm just looking for this experience to go as planned, and I've been planning for it since I took the fight. So I'm sticking to the game plan. Not going. I mean, it's going to be awesome for my like personal experience and journey. Uh, I've been in fighting for 12 years and this is definitely the biggest match I've been in. So I'm just really happy to be in this and uh, I think it would be just a dream to cause the upset. So I'm excited. Dylan Boker, please. 
Hey there, this is Dylan Bowker from My MMA News, and my question was for Anthony Pettis. Now, I'm kind of curious because I was speaking to Alex Martinez in the lead up to this fight, and he's just talking about the admiration he had for your Taekwondo skills, how inspiring it was for him. I'm kind of curious, like, what's the mindset like when you're in the position of, you know, fighting a rising fighter that's looked up to you for so long? I mean, it's crazy. It's happened a couple in the last couple of fights, honestly. Um, it's, it's crazy because I'm still young in this game, but I've just been around so long. You know, I, I, fought at the, I fought at the top of the top, fought um, the biggest names in the sport, man. So, you know, I could see you as well as it happens. Awesome. Appreciate the time, man. Thanks. Breeze. Hey, this is Breeze with the MMA Breeze. My question is for Brittany Elkin. Uh, Brittany, how do you feel about the, the comments that Chris has made opening up this press conference about your skill sets and how, uh, how she seems to be pretty confident in this matchup with you? Um, I think she always talks like that, so I, it doesn't bother me. I'm very confident, too. Uh, I just don't need as many words to explain myself. So sometimes I just, like, let it go because I just want to show what I can do in there. And... Um, I just need to say less to, to do that. So. Thank you so much. Thanks, Reese. Ronald E. Smith, please. This is Ronald E. Smith. I have a My question is for Bobby. This is a, a big fight for you, knowing of the stipulations that you need to accomplish just to get in the tournament. So, and you just over, you just heard Bob, uh, Bubba and Brando, they're talking like you didn't exist. So what do you need to do for yourself, not only get to win, but to show that you are here to make and to make your full name in this whole whole tournament. Well, I mean, I do exist. I'm sitting right over here, so you know they don't see me, but it is what it is. You know, um, June 10th, I I'm gonna be shaking up this 45 division right here. So I'm gonna get that win, and then they'll talk about me now. <clears throat> Trevor Ritchie, please. Trevor Ritchie with the HITP Network. Um, question for Clarissa. I saw you said in 2020 between COVID, all the canceled fights, uh, sexism within the sport that, and everything else you were facing for that matter that you considered retirement. So how'd you kind of get from that mental space to now being here about to make your PFL debut? Um, I just felt like in boxing, uh, I had accomplished everything already. And it wasn't that it's not like opponents for me to fight, but it's like you put in all the hard work and you think that it's going to be a certain fight that when you beat this certain person that you become like this superstar or like, you know, you get this million dollars, this big, you know, house and nice car and stuff. And I felt like I was putting in some like so much time in boxing that it showed I was dominating all the girls in three different weight classes. But it was like boxing didn't give me that opportunity. So I wasn't thinking about retirement because I was just, oh, I don't want to box anymore. and My body's feeling tired. It was more just like I'm just tired of not getting my just due and not reaping what I sow. Um, but I was able to talk to my uh, uncle, AKA best friend, Andre Durrell, and he just told me like, look, everybody's feeling it right now. Like he's got COVID going on, nobody's fighting. You know, nobody has anything going on right now. Like stay patient, you're young. And uh, he just said, uh, put your, he said, put your life in God. He said, put your career in God's hands. And that's the first time that I ever really prayed to God about something like that. Like I pray to God every day, but it was more of like, I just prayed to God to just give him my career. And if God wanted me to get pregnant and have babies, I was going to do that. If God wanted me to continue boxing and, you know, sing or rap, I was going to do that. I just really wanted God to send me a sign on what he wanted me to do. And God knows that my heart loves boxing. And God knows that I'm, that I'm just a fighter at heart. So I feel like um, he sent me the sign to just start preparing my body. I don't know if it was for a big fight or if it was just, he just told me you need to get stronger, you need to get faster, you need to get, you know, a better control of your weight. And this was God talking to me. So I started back in June, back at home, and I was only able to bench 135. And I was like, I was benching 135 and I was in ninth grade. Like I'm out of ninth grade and only can bench 135. So, um, so my boyfriend is my strength conditioning trainer and he started getting me together. So now I can bench one, I can bench 135 10 times and I can bench 185 one time and now I'm stronger I feel like I have a better control over my diet I really start buckling down on it even when I wasn't fighting so not just being in shape for the fight but being in shape for life and then uh the PFL opportunity came about and that's when God was like this is what I was getting you prepared for so it wasn't like I just came to MMA and I really wasn't prepared it's like oh I've gotten a lot stronger over the past year um 
I just taken my fitness a lot better. I have way less weight to lose when it comes to these fights in this weight class. And I just feel like, um, like I'm in a better mental space. So uh, that was really why I just continued and continue to do both because there's still some girls in boxing I want to beat up and I want to start my MMA career because it was just something that always kind of bothered me a little bit. The fact that boxing and MMA are two different sports, but it was like, they kind of always compared me to Amanda Nunez or to Ronda Rousey. And I was always telling people like, you know, those girls are great MMA fighters, but if either of them were to come to boxing, like I would beat them. But it was just something in my heart that was like, maybe you should get good to where if you fought those girls in MMA, you could beat them too. And I was like, that'd be way bigger than beating them in boxing because you already know, can't no girl beat you in boxing. So that's why I came over here to MMA and I'm sitting here now and I'm fighting Thursday. Thanks, Clarissa. Best of luck. Yep, sorry for making that so long. I'm long-winded, y'all. Harry Mack. Hey, uh, Harry Mack from the Bookies Basement. Question for Bubba. So, uh, Bubba, I just wanted to know, um, how do you feel about the fact that, you know, even, even another decision win uh, might not be enough to get you into the playoffs, despite, you know, a, a pretty dominant win over the defending champ? Oh, it's a little bit disheartening, but, you know, the last fight I had, I, I didn't have the opponent that allowed me to go get the points that I was looking for. You know, it, it seemed like he wanted to melt the clock and, and just walk away with the loss that he walked away with. I think this opponent doesn't have enough to stop me from chewing on his ass. Period. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Best of luck Thursday. Dan Bakley. <laughs> this is Dan Bakley from Cage My IQ. My question's for Tyler. Hey, Tyler, uh, going into this uh, matchup uh, with uh, Brendan, uh, what do you think that you have that he doesn't have that would make you the winner this Thursday? I don't necessarily think it's anything that I have that's glaringly better than him. I think he's super talented. I think I'm super talented. I just know what I can do. And if I show up the best version of myself, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that I'll win. I'm a super self-confident guy. And uh, yeah, I think this is a, a real treat for the fans personally. Like he said, we're the only two people who won. Um, I don't think he should have been the only guy who got to finish that night. I think I deserve that third round finish, but I'm not going to look back on things only forward one fight at a time. And this is the most important fight of my life. So I'm excited for it. Thank you very much. Suki. Hey, Suki from Suki MMA here. This question's for Clarissa. You know, we're, we're kind of questioning a lot about your experience in boxing and transitioning over, but what are you enjoying about this process? You know, what are the things maybe you don't like? What are the things you're loving about transitioning to MMA? I would love to know more about that. MMA, it's, it's a lot of things that I like and it's some things that I don't like. But I mean, at the beginning, I didn't like any of it. Like you talk about getting on the ground, doing jujitsu, you talk about the wrestling, you talk about just people grabbing you and just uh, me not being able to um, know what to do, like standing up. It was like, I always felt like if I was to get into like a, like a street fight that I would win. You're just like, hell no, somebody grab you, you gone, it's over. <laughs> So it was like that for me at the beginning when I started sparring and I just was like, I started sparring back in like January. So they, we went through like some drills, started teaching me MMA and stuff. I was doing jiu-jitsu and doing wrestling and body was kind of getting beat up doing all these different things. had to do all this different training. And the first time I sparred, um, the coach didn't tell me nothing. They was like, look, we just want you to get in there and spar. And uh, the game plan right now is just don't get taken down. So it was like, I was on super fight mode. I'm like, okay, the bell rang. And I'm just like, the girl definitely didn't have as much. She had, she'd been doing MMA for like six years, but uh, she was, she was a puncher and also a wrestler. So it was like, sometimes she would punch at me and then she would go for the legs. And my main thing was just to use what I had already been taught over the past month and just keep her off me. And I got taken down so many times the first session. And when I got back to my room, I was like, oh God. Maybe I knew it was going to be hard, but it's going to be harder than what I thought. But it wasn't because the next day I told coach, I'm like, I don't ever want to be taken down again. So uh, let's get to it. He was like, we were waiting on you. So then we started drilling like more jujitsu, more cage work, more um, wrestling. And uh, I can say that now after doing it so many different times and um, and so much repetition and me learning and growing, I can say that now 
I actually enjoy the wrestling part of MMA and enjoy being able to mix through my box. And I enjoy being able to see when I can throw kicks and being able to catch kicks. I've been kicked in the face before and uh, it's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling. So um, to be able to see those kicks now and to see when they're coming and realizing what I need to do and uh, being able to kick myself has really made me feel comfortable um, just moving forward. But um, at first, I mean, I didn't like anything that wasn't boxing in MMA because I mean, I'm just human and I love what I do. So what I did was boxing and it always consisted of my jab, right hand uppercut and hooks. And then now it's like, somebody can take that away from you. And I don't like feeling helpless, right? So I definitely got to it. And now when I spar, I don't feel helpless at all because I know prevention. I know what to do when something happens. And uh, we've changed up so much of my boxing to be uh, MMA style now that I don't think you guys are really gonna recognize me come Thursday. You're gonna be so different. You're gonna be like, whoa, we didn't expect this, but uh, that's why I'm here for you guys to just kind of guess what's gonna happen and come out victorious. Max Goen. Hey, this is Max Goen from the Goen Live podcast. I got a question for Brendan. Uh, you're at the top of the 145 pound division right now with six points. Uh, does your mindset change at all knowing that a finish really would, would clinch a playoff berth? No, nah, I mean, every time I fight, I come in here to finish and to kill, really. So, like, it's not changed one bit. Um, I feel like I probably was the only guy, even sitting up here, that was back in the gym Monday morning, first thing. A lot of guys took a lot of damage early in the first fights. So, I've had another great camp, back to back with a, a great camp, and put the work in. Um, but these points don't mean anything. A fight's a fight. That cage door's going to lock on Thursday, and we're going to fight. So, points, no points, it doesn't matter. Thanks so much and good luck. Roz. Hey, Brittany, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good, good. This is Raz from Everything MMA Era. Um, first of all, I just want you to elaborate a bit more about the experience in the last couple of days. Um, I know there's been a lot of focus on Clarissa and tell us more a bit, kind of, you know, how does it feel to be in your shoes with all this attention on her and um, on the back of that, then, do you feel a bit offended that fans and media are not really recognizing your experience and the years you put into MMA? Um, well, no, I don't feel offended at all. I feel uh, just ready to get in there. And I feel mm -hmm. like that, uh, everybody putting all the attention on her has just let me kind of slide in and get to work. Um, I feel very confident and um, ready to walk in that cage, let the door close, and let's get to, you know, to the fight. Everybody on the PFL staff has treated me and my corners awesome. Um, we, we got to come in earlier this week and um, I've been actually liking the bubble because my camp was ever, you know really hard for the last few weeks. It was fun, but it was hard. So this has been kind of like letting everything you know feel nice, get, getting ready for that cage time <clears throat> and that weight cut. And uh, I got a little time in the cage today. I feel great in there and um, I'm just ready to go. Thank you very much. Best of luck on Thursday. Thank you. Chris D. Santiago. Hi, Tyler. Uh, Chris from MMA on here. Uh, Brendan doesn't believe you had enough time to have a successful camp between now and your last fight, which was a war. Uh, what are your thoughts on his criticism leading into this fight? I mean, I guess it's fair, but he, I didn't take as much damage as he thinks. In fact, I ran into him this morning, like a minute after I woke up, confused as shit. And uh, he saw me and asked how my eye was, and I was so confused. I'm like, what is this guy talking about? I keep saying I have a black eye. I don't know if you guys I know all see about me. your eye. I don't have any black eye. Uh, but anywho, I'm fine. Uh, he was at the gym back Monday morning. I was back running Monday morning. And uh, I felt fine. Yeah, it was a tough fight. But uh, I'm, I'm in peak physical shape right now, and that's all that matters. So we're good. Awesome. Uh, best of luck to you. And uh, I would love to see your uh, camo Crocs, by the way, if you have them. They're on right now and they'll be on Thursday. Awesome. Thank you. Mark Monier. Okay. Let's go with Conan. Hi, my question is for Anthony Pettis. This is uh, Conan Altatis of Conan Daily. You are facing an undefeated opponent, but uh, what do you think is Alex Martinez's um, weakness as a fighter that you can take advantage of? 
Um, I think I got the uh, experience, obviously. You know, I've been in there with some of the best in the game. Um, watching his fights, uh, he comes from a Taekwondo background, something I um you know, been, been in my whole life, so I, I have experience in that. Um, it's, uh, I was surprised with his, his Billy off his back, you know? So, I mean, there was um, a lot of stuff I took away from his first fight, a lot of stuff I took away from my first fight that uh, you know, I want to go in there and implement. Thank you, Anthony. Thanks. Tanai. Hey, this is Tanai from MA Island. I have a question for Alex. Alex, you said every fight you've had in your career has been a step up, but now you're at a co-main event against Anthony Pettis. It is a big step up for sure. Talk to us about your emotions. How do you feel? There is no feelings in this game. If you feel, you're out. Uh, you just got to be disciplined, stay strong, and go forward, you know? So, you know, I mean, you're, you're allowed to, to have feelings, but you, you got to have time for that, you know? Um, Stay disciplined. That's that's all I can say. I'm staying disciplined and doing the work, you know, and staying disciplined with my food, staying disciplined with everything, with training. So yeah, that's uh, hard work. That's all I can say. I've been putting the work, and now we're ready to go. That's awesome. Good luck. Thanks, man. Ronald. This is Ronald E. Smith from Getting Real. My question is for Bubba. Bubba, you just said a few minutes ago that you don't think Bobby is at your level. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, um, I'm a national champion wrestler from Arizona State. He's a guy from Arizona. I'm bigger in his state than he is. Um, I'm on a mindset and on a trajectory for a million dollars. My man just showed up. He just got here. Um, it's night and day. I'm going to run him over. I believe it. He believes it. And if he doesn't believe it, I'm going to show it to him. Cut and dry, like homie said, no feelings. Aldrick, this will be our final question. Thank you. Yes, I have a question for Alex. Alex, um, you cover Paraguay. Uh, talk to me about representing your country and what it means to you, the significance of just putting your country on the map, especially for martial arts and also uh, bringing the championship back to your country. Of course, um, you know, Paraguay is where I was born now and living in Canada, but uh, Paraguay is my blood and uh, representing my people is something always I wanted to do since I was a child and then I have the opportunity to do this. You know, all I can say is I'm thankful and I'm very blessed. So I'm after fire, you know, I'm ready for it. So let's go. I'm excited. All right, that was the final question. Big thanks to all the press who were involved. Uh, we're actually going to face these fighters off. Uh, I'm going to bring our president of fighter operations, Ray Seffo, up here in just a second. But I want to take a look one more time at the featherweight standings, setting the stage for the second half of our regular season. I mentioned it before, Brendan Lachnane, he's the guy with six points in that first round finish. Bubba Jenkins, Mavlid Haibulayev, Tyler Diamond, Chris Wade all carry three points into the standings in the second half of this regular season. Everybody else needing a finish and even some of these guys holding on to points needing a finish to guarantee themselves a spot in the top four only four advance that is a difference between season three here of professional fighters league action and our two previous iterations instead of eight gentlemen or ladies making it to the playoffs it's only the top four in each weight class which means on thursday night finishes will be the story so with that in mind, we look at the lightweight standings. The push to the playoffs for Clay Collard, Ahmed Aliyev, Alexander Martinez, Marcin Held, Haush Manfio, again, dependent on finishes. At 155 pounds in the first half of our regular season, there was not a single finish. I can promise you that will not be the case on Thursday night because these gentlemen are trying to guarantee themselves a spot in our playoffs and of course the continuation of a $1 million championship pursuit. I think interesting to note if you're new to the format of the Professional Fighters League, Clay Collard in the upset victory over Anthony Showtime Pettis, arguably the biggest win of his career, but in the standings for the Professional Fighters League, it's only worth three points because it's a decision. Same is true of Marcin Held, who knocked off Natan Schult, two-time champion at 155 pounds. It's a huge win, 
But because the way this works, because of the format, because all fights are created equal and every fight matters, three points for a decision victory. And now we'll take a look at the ESPN2 card. 10 p.m. Eastern to midnight. Brendan Lachnane, Tyler Diamond start us off. Bubba Jenkins, Bobby Moffitt in featherweight action immediately following. The lightweights squaring off will be Alexander Martinez and Anthony Showtime Pettis. And of course, Brittany Elkin and the MMA debut of the very accomplished boxer Clarissa Shields. That ESPN2 card starts at 10 p.m., as I mentioned, starting at 6 on ESPN+, Plus, 6 p.m. Eastern. Featherweights and lightweights looking for a spot in the top four in our standings. Chris Wade, Movlid Haibulayev, Marcin Held coming off that huge Victory over Natan Schultz. Clay Collard and Jolton Luderbach featured bout on our ESPN Plus card. Collard, as I already mentioned, coming off the huge victory, biggest win of his career. And when we're talking about crossover, Clarissa Shields coming from boxing into the world of mixed martial arts. Clay Collard spent his pandemic break boxing professionally, and now he's back in MMA pursuing a million-dollar championship. He'll take on the... Uh, Brazilian German Joelton Luterbach, Natan Schult and Haush Manfio Schult, two belts, two PFL belts. Right now, zero points in the standings. And another fun fact Haush Manfio and Natan Schult are literally best friends. Natan Schult is the godfather of Haush Manfio's child. They came from Brazil to the United States together, but because of an injury, they have to fight one another for a spot in the playoffs in the pursuit of a million-dollar championship. Lance the Party Palmer, two-time featherweight champion, also looking for his points. Currently zero for the party. All right, we'll get some face-offs going here. I bring out another illustrious name in the world of both mixed martial arts, and professional combat sports. One of the most accomplished strikers you will see on this stage or anywhere else, our president of fighter operations, Mr. Ray Sefo. I promise he's coming. Howdy, boss. Good to see you. As promised. 10 p.m. Eastern, ESPN2, our first fight of the main card. Tyler Diamond and Brendan Lachnane. Two featherweight winners in the first half of the regular season facing off to open the ESPN2 card. Up next, once again at 145 pounds, Bobby Moffitt and Bubba Badman Jenkins. PFL debut for Moffitt. Bubba Jenkins carries three points and a victory over the two-time champ Lance the Party Palmer into his second half bout. Up next, lightweight action. Alexander Martinez and Anthony Showtime Pettis.
co-main event at 155 pounds. And to finish the night, special attraction showcase doesn't get any better than this. Brittany Elkin, Clarissa Shields. Twelve years of MMA experience for Elkin. Clarissa Shields coming up on the one-year mark in her MMA career, but the most accomplished female boxer in the history of the sport. Make sure you join us 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2 and ESPN+. Plus. If you're streaming, you'll still be able to see the main card. Starting at 6 will be the undercard on ESPN+. Plus. The push to the playoffs, featherweights and lightweights. Professional Fighters League action continues.